Faisal, you talk about all of these aspects of the path, you know, all of the elements needed on the journey. But what you didn't mention is that we all seem to also be looking for relationship on the way, you know. And uh, I'd love for you to talk about how that looks, you know, some of the aspects that come into play in terms of relationship as it relates to both partners being on a path. Yes. <laughs> so you mentioned Armageddon? Yeah. <laughs> yeah? So, so we will start with that, you know. <laughs> Armageddon. Since the beginning of time to the end of time, <laughs> the never-ending uh, delight and challenge of relationships. You know? Yeah. Uh, I think there are few things that that potentially to be path to could, could be spiritual path to awakening to um, realizations integration actualization you know of, of who we are you know uh, one of them is the usual spiritual path you know you do this and you do this and that and at least to you know to all what they talk about and another one I, I, I really think is very important, you know, is pregnancy that is being underplayed. I think pregnancy is a spiritual path complete upon itself in such a short, challenging period. Yeah. I think within nine months, the female goes through so many stages of essential development, of realization, and beyond what any man would ever go through, which is creating a baby within, creating a soul within. Yeah. No man could ever go, you know, would ever know what that really means. You know, it's, it's an awesome, awesome thing that we, we take it just for granted and we don't think, you know, what is this female doing, you know? Mm -hmm. Really, she take this little stream of nowhere and just, you know, I mean, just, and all of a sudden, nurturing and evolving and metamorphosing and her body changing and her chemistry changing and as if she's done a thousand rolfing sessions, a hundred thousand bioenergetic sessions and in nine months, and she goes through all the upheavals. And by the nine months, she is walking like a watermelon, just essence, all of those things. They're so. Uh, from what I've seen, from what I've noticed, and in, in my personal life, you know, um, I really noticed that the conscious pregnancy, you know, could lead to realization, integration, and actualization of enlightenment. It can lead through all of that, you know. Yeah. So I go against so many of those who say, you know, um, pregnancy and children is a regression for the for the females and for the spiritual journey. It's the opposite, but it's not been studied enough, not been addressed enough, you know, to what are the stages of pregnancy that the female goes through, you know. And, and I, I so appreciate that you're acknowledging that, Faisal, because it, it really is so under-acknowledged. Yes. And, and, and birth, I mean, the, the creative process of birth is the greatest gift. I mean, certainly, certainly for me it was. Really, it's awesome. It's awesome. I see it, whether conscious or unconscious, what the female goes through is, is awesome. The first three, four months, her personality structure begin to disintegrate, begin to melt. Nausea, for pearl, tar, for those who know essential state, negative essential states. Mm. She melts tar and lead and false pearl and so much yucky stuff melts out of her system. You know, she goes through so much detoxing. Then the second stage begins to shift gears. You know, the soul of the child begins to formulate a body and her soul begins to merge with the soul of the baby and begin to formulate a union, an evolution that challenges the female, brings all her issues, you know, and also a struggle for the child and its evolution. The more there is consciousness, that process, I think, will lead to immense realization. When does the golden essence kick in? When does the white essence kick in? When does the, you know, uh, I mean, all of those stages, there is no study about it. 
we don't know, you know? Uh, I mean, I was lucky I was open in my system when I was with my wife and the children, and I, I could feel the pregnancy. I felt as if I was, re I was so merged with it, and I couldn't, uh, I couldn't believe the immensity of the richness, mm -hmm. you know? What am I, I going through? And how her body was shifting from ordinary body, you know, to an essential body. Her skin changes texture, the density of it, the te temperature of it, the, uh, sometimes I put my hand, I don't want to move it. It's glued to, you know, to so much richness and, you know, uh, all of that. So I believe that's a path that I hope women will be encouraged and empowered to explore and bring us this great gift. I think in nine months, the female go through what a male go through in about 30 years, <laughs> you know? Honestly, you know? And we have other tasks to do. It's okay, it's not a reduction of the male in any way, but it's also important to glorify the female and her contribution to, to, to what, what we have, you know, really. I always say, Christ couldn't come without his mom. Mm -hmm. Not without dad. <laughs> but it's, 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 anyway, that's, that's another chapter, big chapter. Uh, the other part that I also feel could be an incredible uh, spiritual path is relationships. You know, relationships can be an, an incredible path of uh, unfoldment, of evolution. I believe, strongly believe, if a person can open up to another person, they'll be open up to the whole universe. We are so isolated, so insulated as, as a spiritual being. Our point of light is encased in our narcissistic shell, the ego, you know, so much, that if we can, through some magical force, open that crust, and feel another person and love them and exchange with them and really be in union with them, to, to be able to do that, we will be able to, to tune into the whole universe, to the Alpha and the Omega. You know? So it's a quite a challenge, quite a journey. You know? <laughs> so so it's, it's, it's really an, an, an immense unfoldment. I was lucky that, you know, uh, my wife were in the journey and I, you know, uh, I remember that uh, tuning in to the relationship and to, to what's, what's unfolding and not taking every issue that came up between us as something between her and me, that maybe another agent is the culprit. Yeah. Maybe something else awakening inside us and triggering uh, our reaction or our issues. Having this ability to look, to inquire, to objectify rather, identify, you know. Depersonalize. And, yeah, instead of personalizing, it's more like, see that it's a process going on. Uh, it led to a great deal of how much I discovered about essence, honestly, you know. It was through that union, I discovered so many qualities. I, 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 I could not discover without that union. You know? And- uh, Could you be more specific, please? Yeah, I will. And, uh, but first I wanna, I wanna talk about the culprit. You know, the <laughs> okay. bad guy behind it all, you know? Okay. <laughs> I think love <laughs> is the disaster behind it all. <laughs> I think, I think God knew how foolish we as human beings are. So he in, in, induced us with some kind of a magical potent called love. We fall in love and we go crazy and we lose boundaries and we go through so many things. And not only that, I think without this wine, without this love, no children will come. Right, right. Really, if we think rational, you know, how much is going to uh, take and need and cause and nobody want to bring children. Rationally, it doesn't make sense, you know. But all of a sudden, a glass of love and you're in love, madly in love. And 
all the chemistry and the universe work through you and this magical being comes, you know? So this magical substance, this love, has gradations, you know? Some could be nice liking, so people like each other and they get married and they have companionship, and that's good too, that could be good. Some more, more they, they really love the other person. Some, the full catastrophe, they fall in love, fully fall in love. And when you fall in love, when you love, there is trouble. Because love, energy, the essence of love circulating in the system will bring so many issues will it bring memories of how we got hurt when we were loving to our, our parents, how we were forsaken because we were so vulnerable. All of those th issues be begin to come as the wine of love circulate in the system. The more love, the more issues come up. The full catastrophe is that when you are in love, fully in love, then every issue in the book comes up. It's opposite of what people think. People think, oh, you don't love me enough. If you don't love me enough, you don't step on my toes. I'm stepping on your toes because I love you so much. It's all absurd. The, the love brings out hurt, anger, rage, betrayal, abandonment, all the wounds that the soul suffered from when we were loving as children, when you reach the depth of being in love, anticipate all those issues to come up. Mm. If you have this frame of mind, if you have this attitude about it, then that creates a protection about what's coming up. You know? Yes, well, I wish I knew you 30 years ago. <laughs> I wish I did. I, you know, I would not have lost my marriage. You know, really, I wish I knew mm. then what I know now. You know, because I was so much in love with my wife and she was so much in love with me. And our love every day, every night will induce one quality of love and adoration one way or another. Then the issue comes up about it. And I didn't know enough at that time. I knew some. You know, we were just developing the diamond approach at that time and seeing some of the picture, but not really the bigger picture, you know. Didn't see much, it took time, it took uh, grilling, being grilled by so much, you know. But the result was so much hurt and anguish and um, disturbance in the relationship that not, that was neither her intention or my intention to do that, you know she will accuse me of something or I will accuse her of something that has nothing to do with what, what is there. You know? It's just something coming from the past, projection, a transference, an object relation taking place, got it triggered by the quality. Like for example, if, I wa if we were so much passionately that night, ecstatic passionate love, we're jumping each other bones, we're just like, jungly, wild, in love, mud, you know, all of those beautiful passion, you know. I want to eat her flesh, she want to jump my bones. I mean, you, you name it, all of that. Then the next day comes all kind of reactivity, you know. Comes anger, comes frustration, comes betrayal, comes like, what, what was that about, you know. Then little by little, as if a whole clusters of issues begin to emerge and all of a sudden it seems like the whole Oedipal situation emerged. Mm -hmm. yeah. That she had that love for her father, he couldn't receive it. I had that love for my mother, she couldn't receive it or he capitalized on it or my mother capitalized on it. There was interference in the Oedipal stage that led to frustration, to rage, to anger, to betrayal, to hurt. So whatever happened at that time, the flow of this love, which is pomegranate love, is this, this scalar, you know, uh, uh, this passionate, ecstatic love that you feel, I, I'm so much in love with her and she's so much in love with me, we're gonna be living for, you know, happily forever after, you know. It turns out to be, you know, we're gonna be living, uh, I don't know, hellishly forever after the next day, you know. So as you fall in love, as the relationship deepens, 
and you get closer and closer. It's like a butterfly, like a, a moth coming closer to the flame. Mm. You're gonna be bent. You're gonna be consumed. And if you have the knowledge, the understanding that from grounded love, ecstatic, passionate love, gonna trigger all the Oedipal situation. And golden sweet merging, like we just wanna melt into each other. We don't wanna just, you know, all of that. That's gonna leave, uh, bring all the uh, betrayal from mother, abandonment by mother, uh, all the marriage state that happened with mother, you know. And if, if uh, personal love come, thirdly, Connection, it brings that feeling of I'm not, I'm going to be abandoned, I'm not going to be contacted, you don't see me. And if it is the deepest, which is uh, loving them for who they are, not just for the goodies you get, not for, you know, if it is goodies and mixture of narcissistic supply and change, it's beautiful, you know, it's lovely. But if you really love them for who they are, it is like stepping on their deepest, most sensitive wound there is in the sacred heart. And for me, it's like I went through the whole gamut with my wife because we loved each other for who we are. And I loved her the way exactly she needed to be loved, which is, I, I loved her as the goddess. She was my goddess. And I loved her ecstatic passionately, you know, pomegranate. But ecstatic passionate love for her was the most threatening because her mother would not, she wanted to be the queen. She wanted to be the goddess. And she even told her, you know, there's only one woman in this house. Mm -hmm. you know? yeah. So to be loved as the woman, which she was, to me, she was the woman. She was, I, I really loved her. And to me, I was enjoying it. I have no problem with pomegranate essence. Yeah, I love, as I, I enjoy it, I have it, you know. And she loved me divinely. Yeah. I was her God in a divine way. And the divine was the most wounded part in me. Mm. I was not allowed to be divine. Divine, only God can be divine. Yeah. And I felt divine. I felt God doesn't measure up, you know. He has to catch up, you know. I wanted my mother to love me more than God and more than Muhammad and more than Christ and more than all of them, you know. So I felt like, no, I cannot claim to be wanted to be loved divine. So she, this woman comes, she loved me that way. So she was stepping on what we call the corn, the, the wound, the wounded part, you know, that the more you step on it, the more it hurts. She loved me exactly. I longed to be loved, but it brought every pain in my heart. So I fought her and I loved her the way exactly she needed. She's adorable, goddess, artist, beauty, you know, and that was like killing her, you know, <laughs> even though exactly what she needs. So when the level of love and the level of mating and the level of the relationship goes deeper into the essential richness and union, all the way that you really love the person for who they are, anticipate the deepest narcissistic wound to awaken. They're gonna be so hurt, so devastated, you know, and they're gonna accuse you of all kinds of things and their beast gonna come to the rescue, you know, and will fabricate stories about you. I mean- Armageddon. Armageddon. <laughs> Armageddon comes. You know? So relationship can be a very interesting richness in which you can exchange, you know? I so appreciate what you're saying about your relationship, Faisal, mm -hmm. in terms of being sacred and, and being divine. It's, it's, so, it's so rare for people to actually look toward, relation, look toward their partner as divine, as sacred, as a sacred union. Uh, you know, it's so rare for that to really be the case. Really, and, and these levels, I say it, you know, and somebody I hope hears it. This level can happen only in soul mating. Mm -hmm. It cannot happen that, you know, um, have another woman as my soul mate and my wife as my partner. You have to have it with when and only when. Yes, well, that's provocative too. Yes. 
It's very sacred. It's soul to soul connection. I remember um, a friend of mine was telling me some teaching from uh, the Russian Orthodox. The Russian Orthodox have a teaching, they, they claim that it came from Christ. And Christ told them that the soul, when it was created, it had male and female in holy communion mm. as one. And then to enter this realm, we needed to differentiate in yin double, and yang. Double helix. Yes, in order to make it. Otherwise, you know, it, 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 it doesn't work. A man cannot get pregnant and go hunting. Cannot, you know, uh, it, it has to be divided in an equal two parts of a kingdom. Female takes care of one part, male takes care of one part, and these are two halves of the same soul, one soul. You know? mm. And during the fall, from God knows since when, Adam and Eve or whatever, the two halves separated. And it's, it's rarely they meet, and sometimes they meet. And when they meet, that is soul mating. The two halves of the two soul come together and mate, and there is completion, and there is then an, a complete experience of the integration of the whole journey. Mm -hmm. Yin and yang, of absolute and radiance, of material and spirituality, of male and female, they all come together only in that divine union. You know, if, if the soul doesn't find its mate. Now that's the teaching of the Christ or what they claim. It looks and there are three very close to it and it can choose one of those three and soul mate with it. And if it doesn't have the chance to meet one of those three closer to it, there are six. They are less close, but it can also mate with them. Then there are 12 up to 66. After that, we get lost in the shuffle. Uh, I would imagine so, after 66. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. Yeah, yeah. So God knows how many lifetimes the souls are searching. Each half is searching for its half. You know, uh, this is teaching. I, I, it's not mine. I received it and I share it. You know, some people believe it, some people don't. And from my personal experience, I witnessed who Christ and who Mary is in terms of this. They showed me. This is my personal experience. They showed me who they are to each other. Oh. They are two halves of the same. Come and go into different reincarnations. Sometimes a mother, sometimes a father, sometimes a son, sometimes a maid, but they are, they belong to, to each other. Yeah. And I, I witnessed their union. They came to me in front of me in a healing time and I could see the lesson. And I tell you, the love that resulted from the union of, their, of the two was unbearable. Wow. Was such a beauty, such a richness, such a fulfillment that I felt, oh, no wonder the deepest in every human is looking for their mate, is looking for this relationship as an integrated part to reach completion. And of course, you know that in, in, you know, in the Tibetan and in many other lineages that uh, the guru or the teacher or whoever it is cannot even complete their mission without their consort. That even the Dalai Lama cannot complete his mission without his consort who is the, who is uh, Tara. But this lifetime Tara didn't come because of the time he needed to stay in, the, in that realm to protect him, to, you know, to, to soothe him because she, she, they knew that this is gonna be a very devastating time, you know? Is that uh, green Tara? The, uh, Tara with all her oh, colors. With all her colors, okay. She changes whatever she wants to be. She can be green, she can be white, she can be gold, she can be, you, you change your state. The point of light change your, uh, her state. And his point of light is Avla Kateshvara, and Avla Kateshvara's mate is Tara, and they, Dance their dance. One night pomegranate, one night golden eagle. God knows what they want to do. So the relationship there uh, can be an unfoldment of so much richness, so much mating, but it's sacred. Yeah. It's absolutely sacred. In my depth of my relationship with my wife came the time when we, we entered 
a beautiful passage of the journey in which I started embodying a quality called the stupa, which is the totality of the male essence. You know, mm. it has the empowerment, embodiment, you know, and the stupa lands ultimately in the male's genitals. That's the home. She was embodying the chandelier of essence. The chandelier of essence descends in the vagina. And when we made love, it felt that's the completion. The chandelier is like the robe of the glory, the jewels on the stupa, you know? And that was ultimate holy communion. Come union, holy communion. <laughs> and it's beautiful. Yeah, and Shakti. And yes, and, and that is the genital embrace that Wilhelm Rai was talking about. In that union, I remember that the union was so rich, so deep, I, I lost every concept of, uh, you know, mind and love and all of this. And in a realm that was really an amazing uh, realm, I, I was in touch with my sperm, you know, and my sperm was like a being, the head of it were diamonds, made of diamonds. The DNA is coded in diamonds. While in union, you're saying you're in touch with this? During that time, the descent of the stupa and the chandra, and we were entering that stage after we kill each other, you know, <laughs> with all the issues. But something I was noticing, some depth of love beginning to emerge, you know. I said, what's it about? You know, what's it about? And she was, the chandra descending in her womb and her genital, and her egg was blossoming. Mm -hmm. My sperm felt being cleansed. All the negative programming where the diamond was shining and her egg was And I realized the deepest love was the love of the sperm for the egg. Mm. Oh, wow. 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 You know how that shifts everything else? Made me bow to creation. That the ultimate law of preservation and love is coded down in this. Yeah. We are ruled. God is down there. Ruled. Ruling. You know, to preserve it. And that if we really reach the secret, sacredness of this union, the two souls can meet and that sperm and the egg can love and a child can come. Yeah, encoding of creation. That's so creation. beautiful, Faisal. And, it, and it's, you know, it's, it's, um, it's almost heretical in today's day of polyamory. And, you know, especially as a therapist, when, you know, you have... I know, I was a biologist, therapist, like that. Now I am obsolete, old-fashioned. Yeah, yeah, kind it's of. really sacred. I know the orgasm that comes from the chandelier and the stupa and holy communion. No orgasm comes from, you know, one night stand and, you know, getting drunk and all of those things. So I know there is sacred life. It doesn't make you lose anything. It's not like, oh, I am just going to be stuck with one woman or stuck with one. No. From that day on, my woman became all the woman to me. Mm. One day she is jungly. One day she is delicate, divine. One day she is angelic. One day she is demonic. One day, everything I wanted. Everything. <laughs> nothing was missing. Mm. You know? And I was all the men to her. You know? We used to see that my eyes, I look, but I, nothing, you know, no, 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 like nothing pulls in me outside. If I see even a beautiful woman, I say, bless you for your man and for yourself. It was <coughs> such a beauty, such richness that made the relationship between male and female so sacred. Like maybe that was the original relationship for Adam and Eve in paradise before, I don't know, the fall and the sinning. So yes, I believe the relationships, uh, and especially if it's taken through the spiritual path, can lead all the way to the fulfillment and gratification, much more than just even doing it alone. Much more, but it's more challenging. <laughs> <laughs> really more challenging. Sure is, but thank you for the inspiration. <laughs> yes, no, it's really so inspiring. That's. You know, and the idea of the, of the, the soul has its own half, you know, and that still remains to me an, 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 an open field. I really don't know. I've seen it in the Christ. They showed me, you know, the, the, the union. 
uh, I'm still waiting for her. Did she come? Did she go? Is it coming? You know, it's too late. But it, I feel that affinity and love for all human beings that in the point of light, in the soul of every, there is longing for a mate. I haven't found anybody who has transcended it, you know. I, I so agree. And, and it's missing in so many spiritual paths. And, you know, you have, you have all of these si silos like relationship coaches and sex therapists and tantric experts and, you know, couples counselors and and whatever is there on the spiritual path, sometimes it's overly sexually liberated, sometimes it's chaste, you know, somewhere in between. It, there's just yes. so much, but, but it is, yes. my, my experience is they're, they're, they're all separated out. Nothing, nothing really synthesizes the relationship within the spiritual path as something that is truly divine and sacred and worthy and yeah, really holistic it includes all of that it doesn't leave anything missing there was nothing missing really everything comes together and the beauty and the safety of it that I am with my beloved and we are committed and belonging to each other so the whole world is off it falls off you know, I'm not a hungry ghost looking and missing. I feel I am just so enriched and I am here to learn and evolve. And she is an ancient being and I am an ancient being. And there's so much to exchange, so much to share, so, so much to, I don't know. It's, it's, to me, it's, it's, it's hard to emphasize, like it needs a whole yeah. teachings about it, you know. But the issues to really be mindful, it just come up. Every quality comes through, you know. Yeah. I feel peaceful at night with her. The next day, doubt comes, you know. Then I see, oh, doubt and peace go together. It's not about her. Peace came and released doubt in my mind. So that, that way we don't engage. But I didn't know. She didn't know, really. Our love kept us but the issues separated us was so difficult. Yes, well, um, I'm sorry that you learned the hard way, but thank you for sharing. Yes. Yes. So appreciate hearing part of your personal path, Basil.